happy Sabbath. I hope all of you had a wonderful, wonderful week. And I ask the Lord to bless us tonight with love, joy, and peace, and that his presence will be here to teach us, to continue to direct our minds and our hearts to him. And may he continue to protect us and give us good health. And tonight we're going to continue with the book, Christ Object Lesson. And the author is Ellen White. And tonight the title is New and Old Treasures. You know, while Jesus was teaching the multitude about the kingdom of God, he was also educating his disciple at the same time because he's preparing them for their future work. So in Matthew chapter 13, 51 to 52, this is what Jesus said. First of all, he asked them a question. He said, have you understood all these things? He was referring to the parables that he was told, he was telling them. And then what did the disciples say? They said, yes, they replied. And so Jesus said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out in his store room new treasure as well as old. So what is he saying here? So who is the teacher of the law? Everyone who really knows God's word is the teacher of the law. And God's word is the treasure. You know, all of us are Christ followers, right? And the previous parables say that as followers of God, we recognize how precious are this truth. And then we will sell everything to dig deep into the ground and to get this treasure. And so now when we have this treasure, Jesus say what? To share it. The owner of the house brought it from his storeroom, the new and the old treasure. While the disciples who has just claimed that they understood what Jesus was teaching, and now they are responsible to bring forth their understanding to others as if they were distributing from the storehouse of their wisdom and understanding. The storehouse has new and old treasure. So what does that mean? What is the new and old treasure? The great storehouse of truth is the word of God, including the Old Testament and New Testament. So these are the new and old treasure, the New Testament and the Old Testament. So we are to share the entire Bible. The truth in the Old Testament is just as valuable as the New Testament. Did you know that? Jesus was as much a redeemer in the Old Testament as in the New Testament. Ellen White said that before Christ came as a man in the first century, the gospel message was already given thousands of years before then. Well, the gospel was first given to Adam, right? And then Adam passed to Seth, to Enoch, to Methuselah, and then to Noah. And then Abraham also, he knew the gospel. And he spread the gospel to the land of Canaan. And, and Ellen White said that the Lot, his nephew, also know the gospel. And he bore the message to Sodom. So generation after generation, faithful messengers preach the message of the coming Messiah. You know, the religious ceremonies the Jews observe was established by Christ himself 
in the Old Testament time. Christ was the foundation, the base of the sacrificial offering, right? The Lamb of God. But the ceremony was installed thousands of years before. And these activities, celebrations, all pointing to Christ. So Christ, in essence, is the treasure in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So how is Christ's follower to share this old and new treasure? Well, as his follower, we would share his story, his life, and his teaching, his humiliation on the cross, his purity and his holiness, his matchless love for sinners, for humankind. And they're going to share the Old Testament through all the sacrifices, ceremonies, which all point to Jesus. And then also, you know, the patriots and the prophet, also they prophesy about Jesus. So all these we are to share from the Old Testament. You know, many times we hear preachers say that after Jesus came, the Old Testament is redundant. Is that true? You know, Jesus used the Old Testament to shed light on himself. And he quoted Old Testament, someone said, 78 times. And to the Jews in the first century, what Jesus taught from the scripture, at that time they only have Old Testament. So actually what Jesus taught them, referring to the scripture that they knew, they took it as new light, something that they have never thought of, imagined of, and never taught of. Because the scripture was pointing to Christ. And they never look at it that way. So that was a new light to the Jews in the first century. Before Jesus left the earth, he told his disciples that the Holy Spirit would further enlighten them. And the word of God would continue to be unfolding to them. And they would be able to present the truth in new beauty. Something quite interesting about the Word of God, Ellen White said. The story of redemption, including Christ's character, Christ's life, his death, his mediatorial work after his ascension, have been a study ever since the time of Eden. And yet, through the Holy Spirit, this gospel truth keep developing, keep developing, and keep expanding. She said that in every age, there is a new development of truth, a message of God to the people of that generation. The old truths are all essential. New truth is not independent of the old, but an unfolding of it. It is only as the old truths are understood that we can comprehend the new. This is what she said. And so after I read that, I was wondering what new lights God wants to reveal to us in this 21st century. Well, it is said here in this chapter that we have to understand the old truth first before we can comprehend the new lights. Jesus understood the Old Testament. Whenever he was trying to explain his resurrection to his disciple, he always began at what? In Luke 24, 27, said he began at Moses and all the prophets. 
and he expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. So Jesus knew the Old Testament well, and he brought forth the new light that point towards him. And so the new light glorifies the old. And furthermore, to share light, we first has to be the student of the light, which is God's words, right? You know, we know that there are three kinds of students. The first kinds is they only believe the truth from the Old Testament, which was the first century Jews and also some of the Jews in today, the Orthodox Jews. But then Jesus say what? He said, had ye believed Moses, Christ said, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. You know, the Old Testament wrote about Jesus, the Messiah. And how can we do without New Testament to know that Old Testament pointing towards the New Testament is the continuation of, of the story of redemption. And then also there are a lot of people that teach and believe in the gospel only, the New Testament only, and they set aside the Old Testament. But what did Jesus say in John 5, 39? They are they which testify of me. The Old Testament testify of Jesus. And the third type is the kind of student that we all should be. Those who teach both or learn or study from both Old Testament and New Testament. They believe in the Old Testament law, the prophets are the roots, the foundation, just like a plan needs the root, right? And the New Testament gospel is the fragrant blossom and the fruit that it bears. So we cannot do without the root. We cannot do without the fruit, right? So the Old and the New Testament are both essential. And this third category of student, they believe Old Testament sheds light on the new. And the New Testament sheds light on the Old. In each testament, is a revelation of the glory of God in Christ. Alan Weiss said, both Old Testament and New Testament will continue to reveal new depth of truth to those sincere and earnest seekers. She said, the work of our Redeemer on this earth is and ever will be a subject that will put to the stretch our highest imagination. What does this phrase mean? That the work of Redeemer on this earth and ever will be a subject that what? Put to the stretch of our highest imagination. You know, when we hear people say stretching our imagination, meaning what? something that is impossible so impossible that perhaps it's not true but then what she's saying is that true students of god's word will understand things that seems impossible well in order to understand the Bible, we need to study it prayerfully and invite the Holy Spirit, right? As we do the deep searching. We cannot just pray for the Holy Spirit and not studying it. We need to have both. Deep seeking of God's word, deep searching the depth of his words, and also what? With the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know, Many of us have real difficulty in grasping the depth of God's love. 
You know, when we study, when we read about the gospel, many times we say, oh, we've heard that story before. Yes, I read it many, many times. Yes, Jesus is love and Jesus has compassion on the sinner. But do we really, really comprehend the fullness of God's love? How much you really love us? I really don't think so. Sometimes I really scratch my mind because my one of my reading of Ellen White's work is that we need to study the love of God, the redemption story, you know, eternally. You know, it takes that long for us to really grasp it. And I think that if we truly grasp the love of God, that we would be really, really loving our neighbor as ourselves at this moment. But that is something that's really hard for us to do because we haven't yet comprehend the love of God. Ellen, Ellen White also said in this chapter, it said that all these subjects, which is about God's love, story redemption, the compassion of God, they are open for our research if we seek diligently, humbly, prayerfully, and with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And she said that if we do that, our comprehension will increase in brightness, which is increase in enlightenment as we behold it. And as we aspire to grasp it, its height and depth will ever increase. That's what she said. And when we do that, we will experience what the Bible calls abidance in Christ, like the branch abiding into the vine. And we will understand and experience what it is to be eating the living bread from heaven and drinking the living water. And we'll experience experience continually the freshness of the Holy Spirit, how it will influence our daily life. In our prayer, she said that we'll become a real conversation with God as we would talk to a friend. And often there will come to us a sweet, joyful, sense of the presence of Jesus. And often our hearts will burn within us as Christ drawing close to us. And we will have the Enoch experience. Remember the Bible say Enoch walk with God. We often wonder, what is it like to walk with God? Well, Ellen White said that those who really search his words dig deep into his word and with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and with prayerfully as we, we, with prayers as we study his word, they will have that experience, the Enoch experience. And when we do that, what would other see in us? What would they observe in us? They will observe what? That's humility, that's meekness, that's a living, perpetual, working, spiritual energy, spiritual freshness and power and joyousness like the energy of a youth. Ellen White illustrates that person will be like a mountain stream fed by unfailing spring and a sparkling water refreshes those who are tired and thirsty. And she said that these people would be what? True representative of Christ and will not give lifeless testimony and will not preach the same sermon over and over again because his mind is continually being enlightened by the Holy Spirit. And this person will not be ministering with stale bread. They will present the old truth with new light, 
not old truths with staleness, but the old truths with new light. And there will be a new perception of truth, a new clearness of the truth, a new energizing power for those whom he is ministering to. Ellen White said the fire of God's love will be kindled within them. The word of truth will grow in importance and it will transform the listener's mind and character. Wow. What a wonderful message. So in summary, this chapter, what I got from it is that as follower of Christ, eventually we will become teachers of the truth, sharer of the old and the new treasure from our storehouse. Our storehouse is what we have been inspired by the Holy Spirit, what we have gotten from the Word of God. So Christ tell his disciple to share this old and new treasures. And also Ellen White expounded and also expanded much more saying that, you know, those who wants to share, first of all, they have to be student of God's word first. And then as we dig deep into God's word, we become benefited from the word. We become a living spring. We become what? A continual light for those around us. And that the message will no longer be stale because God, through the Holy Spirit, continually enlighten us as we share this to others. And I hope and pray that each of us will become student of God's word and then become sharer of his words. Happy Sabbath.